Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Marisa Kazem and today I'm going to be showing you how to transfer movie images into your bullet journal. Since May this year, I have been using transfer paper to transfer images like this jasmine castle into my bullet journal and I'm going to show you guys how I do it. So the first thing you're going to need is obviously the transfer paper. I just use wax-free transfer paper from my local store. I can't really link this online, but I will try to link it. I get it from Hobby Lobby. Otherwise, just as long as you get something wax-free, it'll be fine. And then that way you can still erase it and it won't interfere with any drawings. Also, if you like this video, make sure to like, comment and subscribe so you don't miss out on any more of my artistic content. So the next thing we need is a transfer tool or stylus. I got this from my local shop as well, but you can just get this on Amazon and I just pick the finest tip that I can find. The next thing you need is a good quality eraser. I don't show myself using it in this video, but basically once you're done with your drawing, you can just erase everything away after you've outlined it in pen or however you'd like to do it. So there are two sides to transfer paper. One is white and one is black, which has the graphite on it. You want the black side facing down onto your journal so that that way you are transferring the graphite with the tool. And now I'm just cutting out this image just a bit smaller so that I don't waste as much paper. So now we're going to line up the image with the transfer paper to make sure that it's completely covered. If there are any parts of the image that are hanging off of the transfer paper, then those sections will not get transferred to the journal. So you just want to make sure that everything you want to transfer is covered. And then we can go and cut that out. I tried to waste as little transfer paper as possible, so that's why I'm sticking to this small corner at the edge of my transfer paper. So this next step is optional, but I like to tape my image to the transfer paper to make sure that it doesn't move. You can just clip it in place with like paper clips or something, like you don't have to actually use glue or tape, but I prefer to do this just because it's so quick and it's nice and flat and discreet and out of the way. So attach that to the transfer paper if you do choose to glue it and you'll see it's very secure and it's not going anywhere. And I'm just going to use some washi tape to hold it in place. You can definitely just use like clips or if you want just hold it with your hand but because there's a lot of details I don't want this to move around so I just use washi tape and it holds it in place perfectly. I also just tape only one half of the image down so that I can lift it up and see my work as I'm tracing. So now we're finally going to start tracing. I'm using the thinnest end of this tool and I'm just pressing into the image wherever I see lines that I want. And this part can be kind of tricky. Basically, you have to try to analyze which part of the image you want on the journal and which part you don't. So for me with this image, I did not want to outline any highlights or shadows because I would just paint them in myself with paint or pens or whatever medium I'm using. So I am purely just outlining the objects. So like the spheric dome at the top there, the lines separating the gold section from the red, from the orange, these are just the things that I like to outline and I find that they're very helpful for me. Another thing to be wary of when using transfer paper is that it may not erase completely. Sometimes it does leave a bit of residue left behind, so make sure you're transferring sections that you will definitely be going over in pen or you're sure that the paint will cover it and you're not concerned about it peeking through or anything. That's why with the lighter sections, for example, you may not want to outline where the highlights are supposed to go because then you'll just see that like section in graphite just outlined and it won't erase and it might ruin the effect of your drawing. As you can see, I am lifting up the drawing constantly. I like to check and make sure that I haven't missed an important detail and I find that it's easier to do when you've traced less at a time. 
And so right here you can see I lift it up and I've noticed that I didn't outline the edge of that gold dome. So I'm going to go back in over it where I want the gold to be separated from the red. And that's something that I missed and I didn't realize I did that. So this is basically just a process. This is what the whole thing is like. This is how it goes. And you might see that sometimes I lift up the paper rapidly and the reason I do that is because I like to see the entire image and then see what I'm missing from my bullet journal paper and then that way like sometimes it just helps me see like which parts I've missed out or which details I'd like more because with each image that I'm transferring there's something different. This castle, it's very simple where the outlines are, but sometimes when I'm trying to transfer like an image that has a lot of nature in it, it's more tricky to tell where the outlines are and which parts I want to transfer. So I lift up the paper rapidly a lot of the time and it allows me to see if I have the image that I want projected onto my journal or if there's another line or detail that I need to add. So with this castle, you can see that all of the red strips that are on the pillars have some kind of pattern or detail on them, and I am purposely avoiding them because at the time when I did this setup for May, I didn't have a lot of time and I didn't want to spend extra time adding those details. And so when you look at my cover page for May, I just painted those bits red and shaded them and I didn't add the little patterns. And so I'm just doing the same thing here. I'm not outlining the patterns simply because I just can't be bothered. <laughs> so you can definitely feel free to choose what you want to keep and what you don't want to keep. And here is an example of how I'm doing things. So I'm outlining that little arch, but I wasn't sure if I needed to thicken up the whole thing. And as you can see here, that thin outline doesn't match fully with that entire thick section. So I'm going back in and adding a second line underneath it to make it thicker. Sometimes I do this, I outline a little section that needs a very small section of paint and that way I can see exactly how thick the little area needs to be. And now that bar, that little archway is like the perfect size and it's because I'm transferring but also because I added two lines instead of just the single line. And I make decisions like that all the time and sometimes you just don't know, it just depends on what the reference image is. Like I said, this one wasn't as difficult. But you'll see in a second I'm gonna have another section that required a little bit more outlining. So as you guys can see, there's like a very strange little staircase here, at least I think it's a staircase, I don't actually know, but this is very small and kind of difficult to work with. So first I just outlined the basic shape and then I realized that I did want to outline those little squares so that that way when I go over it later it'll be easier for me to tell what I'm doing. And again I'm moving that paper really fast so I can see what does it look like and make sure that it matches the front image. So with this drawing, I did not want to draw the entire village that's at the bottom. Those are way too many squares and huts and they just don't matter. Like, what matters about this drawing is the big castle. So I decided to leave the bottom wall until the end and that's what I'm doing right now. And then for those red bits of stone that are between the peaks of the castle, I decided to add the lines that I see on there. Sometimes it helps just add a little bit of the outline of what the texture is supposed to be so that the drawing is more clear once you take away the image and you're just staring blankly at it. So that's what I'm doing right now. And then I'm also going to add some lines on the staircase just so I remember that this is a staircase. And then I'll just check my drawing, make sure that I'm happy with it, and then I will remove the image away. And then a lot of the times I'll just compare the image with the drawing and just touch up any details. For example, I was just finishing off that wall because it was a little messy in the photo, so I'm just doing that bit by hand. But yeah, that is it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope that it was helpful. Here you can see the photo, the drawing, and the painting, so I hope that helped you guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.